we're going to talk about cost of the optical fiber and the distances that the optical fiber will support. So this is a large table that I've developed. I don't expect you to memorize this. I've outlined different standards for one gig, for 10 gig, for 40 gig, and for 100 gig. And then across the top is the different types of fibers, different type of fiber optic cable and how far it will go. So for example, if you have, let's say, OM3 fiber installed on your campus, and you want to provision gigabit service, you can see the top two lines. There's two standards there, 1000 base SX and 1000 base LX. Both of those run one gigabit. You can see the cost of the optical interface. The LX is one and a half times the cost of SX. And then uh, with OM3, you can see it will support one kilometer using 1000 base SX optics. It will support 500 meters using 1000 base LX optics. Now, notice that most of these optics, they're either multi-mode or single mode. The 1000 base LX is one of the exceptions here. But if you do single mode, it will support 10 kilometers using 1000 base LX. So 10 gig, hopefully you're starting to become familiar with 10 gig standards. There's the two multi-mode standards, uh, 10G base SR and 10G base LRM. Uh, you can see the SR optics a little bit cheaper. It won't support long distances. So even if you have OM4, the most modern uh, baseband kind of multi-mode fiber, you can only go 550 meters. You know, that is the downside of multi-mode fiber is distance. And the faster you go, the shorter the distance is. Now looking at the lower two, the 10G LR and the 10G ER, those are single mode only. You can see that they're only supported uh, with OS2. And again, they'll go 10 kilometers, or if you do the ER, it'll go uh, 40 kilometers. There's a couple of standards that I've listed here. I have not talked about, by the way, and I don't show in this table, the 25 gig standards. There are 25 G base standards. I didn't put them in this table because this table was already big enough. And that is typically going to be used for servers in a computer room is often what you'll see with uh, 25 gig. So 40 G base SR4, again, it's a 40 gig standard. The SFPs are inexpensive. It does require eight optical fibers. And notice if you have the legacy OM1 or OM2, you cannot support SR4 at all. With OM3 fiber and OM4 fiber, indeed, that fiber will support the 40 gig, but for very, very limited distance. The 40 G base LR4, quite a bit more money. It only requires two fibers, and it goes 10 kilometers on single mode fiber. Similar kind of uh, thing with SR4 with 100 gig. So you have a 100 G base SR4, 100 bucks a piece. It requires, again, eight fibers and very distance limiting uh, with OM3 and OM4 fiber. The 100G base LR4 is quite a bit more expensive, about six times the cost of the multi-mode, but again, it will support 10 kilometers, which is great for campuses. Now, I wanna make sure I point out a couple of things in this. Number one is these costs, if you've bought equipment lately, you're going to say, well, I never saw that level of cost. Those are, you know, those costs are unattainable because Cisco or Juniper uh, wants to charge me so much more. This is the cost uh, from an optical firm that we buy most of our optics from at the University of Oregon. It's called uh, the Fiber Store. It's at fs.com and uh, they're dramatically cheaper than vendor supplied optics, even though often the optical interface itself is all produced in the same factory. You know, Cisco will have the factory produce their optics for them and they'll sell them to it and come out Cisco branded. This is probably from the same factory. It has a special uh, magic code burnt into them that says that they're Cisco optics. And finally, the uh, 40 gig and 100 gig, I already mentioned 25 gig. There are a lot of other options uh, on those standards. 
that go a variety of distances with a variety of fiber. These are the two most common, but there's half a dozen more of each the 40 and, and 100 gig. Now, we, we just took a look at what it costs and how far it went uh, for the optical interface. What does it cost for the actual cable itself? So these are prices that I obtained in September of 2020, and uh, I've listed the cost per kilometer of the individual types. You can see that uh, OM1, a legacy fiber, is actually more expensive than the 50 micron OM2 legacy. It's somewhat more expensive, but the OM3 and OM4 fiber cables are dramatically more expensive than any of those. And finally, you see OS2 single mode at uh, $922 per kilometer, about a tenth the cost of OM4. Now, remember from the previous slide that distances with OM4 get very short as you go faster, whereas with single mode fiber, the distances stay the same. So not only is OS2 a much better fiber from a distance perspective, it's a much better fiber from a cost perspective. It costs a tenth, almost a tenth of what OM4 costs. Single mode is clearly a winner in terms of cost, distance, and speed. We note that the multimode optical interfaces are less expensive than single mode. In some cases, quite a bit less expensive, but for the most part, it's not that much. Equipment manufacturers and cable installers have traditionally tried to direct you to install multi-mode fiber. And I have seen multi-mode fiber in many, many installations across uh, the emerging world and even places in the U.S. Uh, where people believe the equipment manufacturers and they believe the cable installers and they, they installed some nice multi-mode fiber. For example, they installed OM4. Don't do this. It's, you know, uh, OS2 is so much cheaper and has so much more capability, particularly over time as you want to go faster and faster, you want to choose single mode for virtually every application. I need to note that none of our examples that we're going to look at show the cost of the switch or router port to place the optical interface in. If you remember in my previous talk about fiber, I showed you a photo of uh, some equipment with the optical interfaces pushed into the equipment. We are just looking at the cost of the optical interface and the cost of the fiber, not the cost of the equipment. Because believe me, a switch or router that supports a 100 gig interface is going to be dramatically more expensive than a switch or router that only supports one gig. So keep in mind as we look at these costs that a 10 gig or 100 gig capable switch will be more expensive than something that only does, for example, one gig.